What is up, everyone? It's time for another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And here we go with episode 111. Isn't that a fun number? 111. Today, we're going to talk about karate, martial arts, and the relationship with the Olympics. I'm Whistlekick's founder, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, if you're new to the show, makes the absolute best martial arts sparring gear apparel and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome the new listeners and thank everyone that's come back again. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes for this one, and the other episodes, and a whole bunch more, are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From that site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and I really think you should, because we offer exclusive content to subscribers, discounts, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for our Monday shows. You know, we have quite a few different t-shirts at whistlekick.com, including a brand new shirt that we've dubbed the American Martial Artist Shirt. It's a cool logo that, when we came out with it, got a lot of attention. So we put on a shirt. It's great. They've been selling like hotcakes. Get on over there, whistlekick.com. Check it out. Now, if that's not your cup of tea, we do have our awesome no sweat polyester t-shirts. They're awesome under your, your uniform or if you're hitting the gym, really lightweight perfect cut. And of course, hey, they've got our cool logo on them. So check them out. Something for everyone, adults, kids, tank tops, you name it. But let's talk about the Olympics. Specifically, let's talk about karate being included for 2020 and the effect the Olympics has had on martial arts. Of course, karate has been approved as a demonstration sport for 2020 when the Summer Olympics are hosted in Tokyo, Japan. If you're active on social media, You've likely seen some criticism and some fear come from the announcement, but what do we really know? Can we even guess at this point what's going to happen? The World Karate Federation, the WKF, was the group that the International Olympic Committee recognized as the official organization making the bid to put karate into the Olympics. Now, we know that sparring, kumite in Japanese, will be included, but that's really about all we know at this point. If you're a history buff, you know that karate missed being included three previous Olympics. Despite strong efforts by full contact, Kyokushin based groups for a second style of rules, full contact karate rules, the IOC didn't relent. It looks like we're looking at WKF rule sparring. But what are those rules? And are forms included or just sparring? How about weapons? After a lot of digging, we managed to turn up a web page that no one seems to be talking about and is part of the official Tokyo 2020 website. We've linked to it on the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. While nothing, absolutely nothing is set in stone at this point, the information on the Tokyo 2020 page pretty much says it's going to be WKF rules, which makes sense because the WKF would want their rules used. What do those rules say, though? Again, we've linked the full rule set over on the website. Now, the biggest surprise is that the Tokyo 2020 page mentions kata, or forms in Japanese, by name. There hasn't been any mention anywhere else of forms, at least not that I've seen. It's all been talk about sparring. But it's hard to know what mentioning forms kata means. It could mean that the news outlets are just talking about sparring since it's easier to compare and contrast with Olympic Taekwondo. We'll have to wait and see. But let's go over the rules a bit. It's a long rule set, and I'm not going to read it to you. That would be a very long and very boring episode. So here are the highlights. In sparring, bouts are three minutes for men and two for women. Three points for a kick to the head, face or neck, or any technique on an opponent who has been thrown or is falling. Two points for kicks to the front, back, or sides of the torso. One point for any punch or open hand strike anywhere. Unlike Taekwondo, face punches are allowed in WKF rules. So yes, grabs are allowed so long as the grab is above the waist. Sweeps are legal too. The rules talk a lot about technique quality, which is, of course, very subjective. And it was that subjectivity that got early Olympic Taekwondo in trouble and led to the electronic scoring. There's no mention of electronics in these sparring rules. There are no attacks to the arms, legs, groin, or joints, which we would expect. No open hand techniques to the face. Matches go the full length of time or until someone has an eight point lead. If it's tied at the end of time, the judges vote. There are five different weight classes for men and five different for women. 
Kata are scored based on a number of factors. And let's talk about that for a minute because personally, I'm hoping that this is going to be part of the competition. I love watching good forms, whether it's karate or taekwondo or kung fu, doesn't matter. Love watching forms. Those factors include accuracy to the style, which is something we're not used to seeing in most open competitions. In other words, modifying your form isn't allowed. Quality of stances, technique, timing, breathing, focus, technical difficulty, and transitional movements are all considered along with strength, speed, balance, and rhythm when delivering the score. There's a time limit of six minutes and you're disqualified if you forget to bow or your belt falls off. This is a quote from the official rules. Kata is not a dance or theatrical performance. It must adhere to the traditional values and principles. It must be realistic in fighting terms and display concentration, power, and potential impact in its techniques. It must demonstrate strength, power, and speed, as well as grace, rhythm, and balance. The rules have a lot of information about team kata, though the Tokyo 2020 site doesn't mention anything about individual versus team events, though it does quote the WKF stipulation that different katas be performed in each match, including the final. If you're used to forums being scored, that's not how this goes. There are rounds, with the judges voting a winner each round. It's one-on-one. The WKF maintains an official list of accepted kata, and that list is referenced on the Olympic site. There's no mention of weapons, nothing that implies teams are going to be included. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens. We have four years and I'm sure at least a year before anything really concrete is put out. But what does this mean for karate? Fortunately, we have both judo and taekwondo to compare it to. Judo was first included in the Olympics in 1964 for men. Women's judo was a demonstration sport in 1988 alongside taekwondo and included as an official sport in 1992. Taekwondo, comparatively, was a demonstration sport in both 1988 and 1992. It was left out in 1996, and then it was included as an official medal sport in 2000. Why was it a demonstration sport two years? Why wasn't it included in 1996? Because the IOC didn't really want to include it after 1988. There was a lot of skepticism, and there was some stuff that happened behind the scenes. Mr. Gillis covers it very well in A Killing Art. If you haven't read it, there's another reason to go read that book. A short time ago, Black Belt Magazine did a feature on whether judo's inclusion in the Olympics had been helpful. In fact, they did it for judo, taekwondo, and wrestling. We've linked to those articles on the website, but the general takeaway is that popularity soared and the art, practice, sport, whatever you choose to call it, of judo became dominated by rules, with certain traditional movements being removed. While judo's inclusion in the Olympics has helped it grow globally, it's stagnated or even shrunk according to some people here in the United States. The Black Belt piece on Taekwondo, of course, mentions the fact that there are different styles of Taekwondo, and not all of them are based on the Olympic rules, which are often referred to as WTF, World Taekwondo Federation rules. Interestingly, WTF events often have forms competition, but there's no forms competition at the Olympics. Will we see the same treatment for karate? I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen when 2020 hits. We don't know if karate overall will benefit from the increased exposure. We do know that all karate, like all martial arts, is far from cohesive. And this standardization on a rule set has already upset some people. I'm excited to see what happens, and I'm hopeful that another martial art in the Olympics will be good for all of us. I am afraid that karate in 2020 could mean Taekwondo being pushed out, as everything I've read says Taekwondo is one of the least certain events for the next Olympics. I don't know about you, but I'd rather see karate, Taekwondo, and Judo, and more martial arts, rather than, say, badminton. No offense to any Olympic badminton fans out there. So what do you think? Will Olympic karate be a good thing or a bad thing? Do you have interest in going out for the U.S. Olympic karate team? Do you think it will have an impact on enrollment at martial arts schools? Whatever your comments, let us know. You can comment on the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. If you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a show topic, go ahead, fill out the form on the website. 
And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we do. You can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com, like all of our great shirts, and you can check out our awesome line of sparring gear there or at Amazon. That's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.